Welcome to this episode of The Wolf and the Shepherd. Today we figured we would jump into one of those topics that a lot of our potential listeners are probably following, but can't just seem to find a podcast out there about their specific niche, their specific topic, their way of life. So uh, through my research, I went to The Wolf and I said, I I found a subset of people that need a podcast about them uh, so they can listen. So the one that I chose was the Amish. Yeah. Now, before we actually start today, I just want to let our listening audience know that we do actually do a little bit of research listening to other people's podcasts. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Like, I think we've listened to four in five months, but... um. And not, oh, not no. whole episodes. Oh, now come on. I mean, there's podcasters out there that we are listening to. Oh, not not the big ones. I'm talking oh. about. Oh, oh, okay. I'm well. talking about the competition, the nobodies. Oh, yeah, that yeah. that is our yeah. competition. Anyway, so we listened to about three and a half minutes of a podcast tonight before we started. Um, and let's was, not let's not name it. Let's not be careful oh, now. I've be forgotten careful. the name of it. Oh, okay, good, um, good, but. It amazed me how enthusiastic it was, you know, just like the guy who introduced it, he was just so enthusiastic. Now, I know why we're not enthusiastic at the beginning of our podcast is because we know what's in it. We like to get the disappointment out of the way on behalf of our listeners before we start. Well, that's our delivery system. Right, I yeah. Mean, dude, why, yeah. Why should we try to flavor something up that is going to be so different and then yeah. disappoint? Yeah, like you yeah. say, let's get the disappointment out up yeah. front. Yeah, disappointment's out of the way up front. So anyway, the Amish, which until... Are, my... are you saying you're disappointed in the Amish? No. Oh, okay. You can't okay. be disappointed in the Amish. No. But, but even if you are, they're not going to find out about it, apparently. Well, so anyway... um. As normal, we try and start off with a definition for our listeners, because people kind of have a view of what the Amish are. But... Well, well, before we even define that, should we talk about how we had a conversation just before we hit record that you kept calling them the Amish and not the Amish? Well, I'd never heard of them before until I came to texas yeah it, so yeah, that that's just kind of bizarre because you kept saying amish i didn't know and, there was a silent r yeah well amish I, well y- y- y'all talk funny well we don't have the amish or the amish nah. anyway wikipedia you know possibly one of the uh least reputable and unfact check sources on the interwebs which in, in our go-to for all of our uh, research needs work closely aligns with our vision um, yes so anyway it defines the amish as such a group of traditionalist traditionalist i think i spelled that wrong when i first wrote it down uh christian church fellowships with swiss german and alsatian anabaptist origins they are closely related to but a distinct branch from the Mennonite churches. So that's going to be fun for the automated transcript thing that we use to try to spell those words. Well, you'd think after that def- definition, right, you'd figure we'd have looked up the definitions of the words Anabaptist and Mennonite, but I didn't do either no, of those. I didn't do either no, of those things. That, I, I kind of know what a Mennonite is, but Anabaptist, I would have just said a uh, chick named Anna goes to a Baptist church. Yeah. Well, yeah, I thought a Mennonite an I thought a Mennonite was a certain type of meteorite, so well, that that does make sense. Yeah. Yes. I, I can tell you that um in England an Alsatian is a German shepherd dog, though. That's interesting. So what a um Alsatian Anabaptist is, I don't really know. Yeah. Uh it's a dog who it's a dog named Anna who goes to a Baptist church. Right. Yeah. And and eats potluck dinner on Sunday afternoons. Right. That's fair enough. Okay. Right, let's go with that. Right. Maybe maybe we should create a Wikipedia page based off of that. Yeah. And go ahead and fill that information in. Well no, we don't we need solve to. that problem. We can go in, we can actually um we can actually go in and edit what they've got on Wikipedia right now and update it with our definition. Oh. Because that's how good it is as a yeah, but accurate resource. Once again, that sounds like a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Yeah. But Let, if any of our listeners want to go in and do that on yeah. our behalf. Yeah, yeah, please. It, you yeah. can actually because of the way Wikipedia works, right? You have to cite a source. And so this podcast can the be wolf. the source. Yeah. 
So there you go. So somebody can oh. jump in and do that for us because, yeah, we're yeah. too lazy yeah. to do that. But if you do go ahead and do it, send us an email at Please. wolfandtheshepherd at gmail.com and we will send you a signed copy of today's notes for the episode. Yeah, and not only that, yeah. but because we're so lazy, I mean, we do have our own website, but yeah. we're just too lazy to set up the email that comes along with our domain name. Yeah. So that's yeah. why we still have a Gmail address. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, I figured like I was a bit confused by that definition, so I should probably go to a more reputable source. Okay which I felt that kind of inclination for a couple of minutes, but thought I should go ahead and do it. So anyway, I went to Britannica.com, which I think is linked to the Britannica, like encyclopedia stuff. Okay. Right. Um, so anyway, it's far more respected source of information, which is probably why we avoid using it. Yes, yeah, exactly. So anyway, it, it describes the uh, Amish like this. It goes, uh, Amish, also called Amish Mennonite, mm. member of a Christian group in North America, Primarily the Old Order, Amish Mennonite Church, which originated in the late 17th century among followers of Jacob Arman. Now, it's one of those names, Jacob, where it's spelt with a K, so he's... Oh, J J A K O B. Yeah, he's gotcha. trying to be street, I think. Yeah, but, that that sounds... Yeah. You know, it, it, yeah. 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 Okay. That's well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I think that's a street name, which is kind of ironic if you think yeah. about it. But uh, okay, good for Jacob. Right. Jake well, well Cobb. It, yeah. Well, Jake Cobb. Yeah. J no, it should be J hyphen A Cobb. There you go. J Cobb. J, 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 J Yeah. J whatever that yeah. grammatical symbol is, which I've forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. J Cobb. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, like, there you yeah, go. Yeah. He gave what? birth to the Amish. Nice. <laughs> good, good for him. Yeah. I mean, so you got Jacob, and you got a uh, couple other people in some other different religions that are, you know, fairly recent. But Jacob is up there. Jacob, so, he gave so, birth to the Amish. Yeah, so, so good for him. Yeah, uh, props to Jacob. So, if our listeners at this point have learned nothing about the Amish, which is probably accurate, um, other um, than Jacob, Jacob, um, I'm about to drop some kind of facts about the okay. Amish. Yeah, just hit, to get hit, the factual part out of the way before right. we start pooping on them. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's right. uh, let's all talk right. some facts about the Amish. Yeah, all right. And, well, I, again, this was like first page of Google, so this might not be as factual as it could be. Anyway, the Amish came to the United States in the early 18th century to escape religious persecution in Europe. Like the rest of us. Yeah, like pretty that's much no everybody That's no biggie. That's no badge of honor. That's here. why we all ran over here. Well, okay. yeah. well not yeah. everybody. I can already see the hate mail coming there. So, it, you know, not everybody came over here escaping religious persecution. Well, no, I came over in 1999 to, re uh, to escape religious persecution, and I was a Christian. <laughs> well, yeah, but you like soccer, too. Yeah, that's it? true. Yeah, so that, that makes sense. Yeah. One thing which actually shocked me was uh, because we... We all have these, um, I guess, preconceptions of the Amish of not wanting anything to do with like anything modern society, right? Yeah, modern technology. Yeah. They don't want to have any part of that. So um, each Amish community, they actually make their own decisions when it comes to technology. So whether oh. they're allowed telephones or cars or that stuff. So you might have one community, doesn't have any phones, no right. cars. And, you know, I don't know how far apart these communities live, but... Wouldn't it be weird if you were like one side of the road and like there's another Amish community the other side of the road and you si see them like driving around in open top cars, you know, talking on their cell phones? Right. It, it, that would be a little bit frustrating. It, it would that's, be frustrating. That, that's literally growing yeah. up on the wrong side of the tracks. I, I would ride over there in my horse and buggy and shout at them. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, shout with a homemade megaphone because yeah. you wouldn't have one of the yeah. you know modern speakers that you could yell at them. Well, you don't know. Some communities might consider that homemade megaphone too much technology because mm, you're amplifying your voice. That is true. Right. That, that's one yeah. way to look at it. Uh, so feel uh, yeah. already feeling sorry for him. Yeah. Now already feeling sorry. Now for him. far from us. Th my... This was not supposed to be depressing. <laughs> the, it, this was supposed well, to be you know an, another happy podcast, and now I'm already feeling sorry for these people. Well, I mean, far from us to make light of the subject of the Amish, but apparently, some communities allow bicycles, right? Okay. But some only allow bicycles with no pedals. 
How do you ride a bicycle <laughs> without pedals? I don't know if you just push it and jump on it. You know, it's like a skateboard. You kind of have to do uh, like a, a lot of the work. It, I don't know. But yeah, no pedals. Now, I don't know if they buy the bike and like take the pedals off or it's just a bike literally with no propulsion system other than it just has wheels and you have to do all the legwork. I, I wonder if there is a manufacturer of bicycles with no pedals that, you know, a couple of guys like you and I were sitting around and we're like, you know what market we need to corner? The Amish no pedal bicycle market. We can sell four of these a year. So let's mass produce these in China, yeah. ship them over, and trade them for <laughs> mass marbles for them or year. something. <laughs> what it, however they're paying for this. Yeah, stuff. mass produce them for a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, actually, no. I think we need to probably order five because we'll probably get a a bigger discount and b. That's true. As the number of Amish keep increasing, our market might kind of yeah. Increase well, along it, with it. and also if we're going to have them manufactured, we got to make sure that somehow. This bicycle with no pedal is gonna break down and can't be fixed, so they'll trade it in to get a new bicycle and somehow like redesign this no pedal bicycle every few years to keep the the model years fresh. Say, ooh, I gotta have the the freshest new bicycle with no pedals. My my thing with it though is like if you live in an insular community, where are you gonna go with it anyway? like 50 yards to like your best mm. friend's house maybe so but i mean i'm sure there's jealousy out there that's like oh well you know jacob the eighth has this fantastic no pedal bicycle and mine's three years yeah. old i i want a better no pedal bicycle i'll tell you what though i'd be showing off if i had the one with the pedals i'd be just i'd be pulling wheelies and oh, doing like yeah. stunts on it well, you, you know what? Now I want to go home and take the pedals off my kids' bicycles and say, you know, yeah, if we're going to learn enough, about the Amish. Yeah, we're going to learn about the Amish for today. the Amish. It's good enough for you, so you can you can have your bicycle with no pedals. They yeah. figured it out. Now go in the backyard and build me a barn. That's right. Yeah. So, um, how this isn't a stump the shepherd question, but how many um Amish do you think approximately are in the U.S. Oh, and wow. Canada at the moment? Oh, U.S. and Canada. Yeah, uh, I'm going to guess probably somewhere around like say 20,000 it's actually 250,000 wow yeah. okay now in 1989 there was only 100,000 now we do know they like large families and breed like rabbits because sure. they don't have sling tv or xboxes right. no distractions yeah anything to do other than ride around on the although pedal bicycles. although i did come up with an idea about this right because okay. they do like to have large families right but right. they tend to all live in the same house so okay. it must be off-putting knowing you've got nine children within about 20 feet of you and you're trying to produce child number 10 or yeah but maybe that's why they build such big barns maybe they send the kids out well, they to don't the live in the, well, yeah to do what i feed the I, horses all night yeah you know, shine the no pedal bicycles yeah I, you know they they gotta have chores Something like that to get them out of the house. I mean, I don't know. I'm not Amish. I don't know. What, I don't. You're supposed to be teaching me these things. I don't want to appear judgmental, but it seems like we're actually creating more problems for the Amish community than they already have at the yeah. moment. Yeah, it, it's a good thing yeah. that they're they're going to listen to yeah. this podcast uh, through their devices and yeah. and realize we're going to solve all the problems in the Amish community. Well, the ones when. Given some of the communities are allowed telephones, I don't know if that was just kind of landlines or whether they're actually allowed an iPhone or like a Samsung or something. Because they can actually listen to the podcast, can't they, if they have like a smartphone? Yeah, but don't they have to have electricity to charge up the battery on their smartphone? Well, maybe the, maybe on their no-pedal bicycle, they can do a kind of like a generator type thing where little Timmy has to pedal for four hours to charge up the iPhone feel sorry for little Timmy. Or they could get us... Well, no, I guess solar-powered technology is going too far. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's a little yeah. bit farther than just yeah. the rudimentary version of a, a generator and capacitor and all yeah. that stuff. So, so um, about 63% of the Amish, um, they're actually located in Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Indiana. Okay. That, that's where most of them are. Now, how many um, Amish people do you think there are in Texas? Uh, less than 2,500. 65. 65. Yeah, I okay, think we so, should... So I was correct. I think we should go and pay him a visit. Yeah. Uh, where at in Texas? Do we know? 
Um, they're in Texas. The internet knows. I didn't uh, bother uh, okay. looking it up. Yeah. But I do think we should go visit them because it's got to all be in one community. Well, yeah. Right? And, and you're talking about these big families. So you're talking yeah. about like four families, basically. Yeah. I mean, they're living in a cul-de-sac somewhere, yeah. basically. Yeah. And they're like, hey, uh, we're going to all move here. We're going to live in this cul-de-sac. And yeah. we're all going to be Amish. Yeah. So, uh, and um, if there are any attractive women in that Amish community, if you'd like to uh, drop us a line, we will come in and dilute the bloodline for you. Uh, uh, I don't know about through all our that. frozen. Um, remember, we froze that. Oh, that sperm true. stuff. We, yeah, we to did. see if anybody would sign up. Yeah, we did answer that email that came yeah. in, and uh, we to thought see if anybody wants our children and, yeah. from our frozen sperm. Uh, that's true. Right. Still waiting on the check from that. Well. Don't we? I thought it was it, they only pay us if somebody like has one of the. No, that's why we're still waiting on the check. Yeah, then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, Amish children uh, mostly kind of like go to private school, but Makes they drop, sense. but they drop out about eighth grade, which is what like age fourteen. Yeah, somewhere around. So there. they miss the yeah. whole high school experience, which probably isn't a biggie. But yeah, they drop out. Now, thinking back to high school, what did you learn in high school, which? if you hadn't have learned, would have been quite detrimental. I mean, if you'd have cut your education off at age 14, what kind of surprises would there have been? Now, remember, this is the Amish, so, I mean, it's, you know, not like right. some of the things you learned um, in high school were really that pertinent to life school. can't say well. that I have anything that I had learned in high school that I didn't have to either relearn in college or couldn't have figured out for myself. Yeah. Uh, trying to go through all my high school classes. Uh, yeah, I mean, I took uh, an AutoCAD class. That worked out very well for me uh, since I've never used AutoCAD since then. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to go with nothing. Yeah. Before we end the facts on the Amish, because I think we've already overdone it in terms of facts. Yeah, I mean, now now we pretty much said all the facts we need to know about the Amish. Yeah. We, we're now experts. Well, the most famous aspect of Amist social life, which we didn't even know they had a social life before, so we've right. we've even got to a fact before we've even got to the fact, is called a rumspringer. Ah, so now I've I've heard about this rumspringer. R U M S P R I N G A rumspringer. Yeah, that's when the kids get to go out and experience the quote unquote English lifestyle. Right. Yeah. Well, it. it it actually translates as running around. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that means literally. They just like run around a barn no. in circles no, to get tired. I, I, I remember watching some TV shows and everything about this rumspringer or rumsprogger, or however you pronounce it. And, you know, they get to go out and they get to do whatever they want for a while, experience what they call the English lifestyle, which is basically the American lifestyle, and then make their decision as to whether or not they want to be a permanent member of the Amish community. So it, it gives them kind of a little taste of temptation, and then they can make their decision whether or not they want to be Amish. Now, one thing I do remember about hearing about this is if they decide to go ahead and, we'll use the term, Americanize themselves, they're shunned. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. they don't get to communicate with their family and friends, and, and they ignore them, basically. So they're all out on their own, where they have no money, they have no possessions, they have nothing, and they're just, they're on their own, and they got to figure it out for themselves. Now, one thing I did learn, which has just come back to me from accidentally watching some um, reality TV show about the Amish, is that when people do get kicked out of the community or voluntarily leave the community, the Amish actually send these kind of people out like bounty hunters mm. to go and try and like win them back into the community. After, uh, But when they come back, they have to do all this kind of attrition for their sins, admit yeah. they were wrong, and they try and bring them back in. It's like Dog the Bounty Hunter, yeah. but Jacob the Bounty Hunter. I don't Jacob know. the Amish Bounty Hunter. Yeah. Doesn't that sound like a great should reality be a great show. TV show? Yeah. It, like, we should be executive producers yeah. of yeah. Jacob the Amish Bounty yeah. Hunter. So, this um, Rum Springer, when I, when I looked it up, and I'm sure I kind of like skimmed across the paragraph because this doesn't sound as entirely thorough 
as probably it should, but it begins with socializing with friends and ends up in marriage. There was more to it, but that's all I got out of the entire paragraph. It begins with socializing with friends at around age 16 and ends up with marriage. Yeah, sounds like uh, some church groups that I knew about when I was younger, too. Yeah. I mean, they kind of along those same lines. Yeah. Crazy. I don't know. Running around's got a little bit yeah. more. Um, yeah. They, it makes it sound a yeah. little bit more exciting than it really is. Yeah. You know, other than that kind of in-depth expose of the Amish, their history, their lifestyle, there are regular people out there who have questions about the Amish, right? About things which they haven't necessarily got factually, but, you know, some, maybe some misconceptions, right. some ideas and stuff. So I, um, again, went on Google and researched the four most popular questions about the Amish. Oh, got interesting. Got the answers, yeah. So okay. this probably covers about 83% of the population who have any questions about the Amish whatsoever. Okay. I actually got the questions and I got the answers. Now, when I say I got the answers, I didn't click to see the source of the answers. Well, but, that's fine. But they are answers. I'm sure they're, I'm sure they're yeah. accurate. So what I was going to do, I was going to sneak in a stump the shepherd thing here where... Uh. Where you might not be wrong, even if your answer doesn't agree with what I found out, because okay. what I find out found out might be complete crap. So true. There we go. Okay. So um, this was the first question, and I don't know why. Like, if you were very curious about the Amish, actually, if you were very curious about the Amish, right? What would be the first question you would ask? Why? Why? Yeah. What? What? Why? Why do this? I mean, it, it, they're they're sitting there and they know everything going on in the country. Well, maybe I mean, they don't. Uh, no, I think they do. Nah. Uh, no, I've got a friend of mine who used to live in Ohio and he talked about going to Walmart and they actually had horse and buggy parking and everything. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they know what's going on outside their little community. So uh, my question would be, why? Why, why would you want to live this life why why choose this way when you know what else is out there so why well, yeah that's not what people wanted to know apparently really the number one question was what do the amish do for fun what do you think the amish do for fun shepherd horseshoes like play horseshoes uh, i can see that that shouldn't be against the religion uh, I think they're a bit of a waste, not want not community. Do you really think they're producing more horseshoes that they've got a well, surplus? Yeah, but they have or once horses. they take off. Yeah, but they have horses they worn down. We, yeah. we know that, and yeah. I'm guessing they're shoeing the horses. Right. And you know, when you have a farrier that goes in and you know replaces horseshoes, the old horseshoes have to be discarded. Yeah. So they've got to be playing horseshoes. So right. uh, horseshoes. Uh, that's it. Yeah. The, the, okay. So, so horseshoes. That's what they do for fun. Well, they play horseshoes. Well, this was a sh bit of a shock to me, but um, games are big among most Amish communities, right? Okay. And apparently, they're very competitive. Now, there was a side note when I read this, and it said there are some individuals who are not enthusiastic about taking part in the games. Really? Yeah. So you get like real moody Amish sitting at the side there, mm -hmm. like not wanting to take part. Well, you know, every yeah. community is going to have somebody yeah. that's going to be moody. So, Well, yeah, it's probably some equivalent, but, equivalent of a millennial who just doesn't want to get involved just right. for the sake of it. Yeah. But but are one of the games yeah. horseshoes? Oh, oh, yeah, no, no, it didn't mention horseshoes. Like really? So it says here, adults in big groups. Now, I don't know what necessary a big group, whether it be like six or... 34 or obviously no more than 65 in texas yeah um it says uh they will play games like charades right charades charades yeah. well charades yeah. charades yeah charades yeah. now how do you play charades over here uh what is it uh you're supposed to start out with a movie yeah now hold up stop right there uh this is where the game falls flat yeah no that's true <laughs> what I've movie, what movie am i thinking of that i've never watched 
Yeah. And you've never watched or probably never heard of either. Yeah. So yeah. so if we went in to play yeah. charades with them and waste we were trying time. to act waste out time. Star Wars, yeah. this isn't going to yeah. work. Yeah. It'd take like 17 months. We'd have to actually act out the letters and let them join the letters and then say the word. Yeah. And then they would try to wonder St- why the... Darawara? Yeah. And, and why the sparkly <laughs> yeah. items in the sky are fighting each other. Yeah. Um, it's another one they play. Pictionary. Okay. Nothing wrong with Pictionary. Okay. Um, apples to Apples. What's that? I've not actually heard of that one. Is this like bobbing for apples? Or? No, I, I, I was thinking it's some kind of comparison game. What am I... Like a kind of what am I thinking of type thing. I, again, I didn't bother looking it up. Yeah. But uh, Apples to Apples. Never heard of it. Yeah. But anyway, there was no mention of any Xbox. So those are the kind of uh, games or, they play. Or horseshoes. Or from, horseshoes, yeah. yeah. I, you would have thought I was a given. But charade, so mm-hmm. come on. Yeah, that's got to be boring. Yeah, right. So um, it's the second question. I typed this. <laughs> typed it. I wrote it down. I couldn't be bothered. Open word. Um, why do Amish remove girls' teeth? Not any girl they come across within their own community. Remove girl. remove girls' teeth. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense to me. It, it, so just girls, I'm I'm guessing. Yeah. So obviously they're assuming their genders. Uh, so they're you know thinking that way. But uh, removing the teeth. Yeah. Uh, you got me. I, I the, first of all, this come up with a theory. Come up with Think it. about everything you know about the Amish. Why would they remove the girls' teeth? So they can't eat as much food <laughs> and keep them skinny. Right. A s- no kidding? Mod- it- no. Modern oh. solution. <laughs> modern <laughs> problems require modern solutions, but that's not it. Oh. Thank you, Dave Chappelle, for that. Yeah, but, but doesn't that no. almost make sense? Yeah. Admit. In, admit to me right now. Well, that something makes that's sense. something you'd do if you lived in the Amish well, community. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll yeah. be an Amish dentist and I'll yeah. say, hey, you know, you, you yeah. got slim pickings yeah. here. So I'm going to remove some of these <laughs> chicks' yeah. teeth to yeah. make sure they're going to be like size four or under. Yeah. But yeah. your advert would be something like, oi, fatty, come here. I can make you help. I yeah. can help you lose weight. Yeah. Like, I'm, I mean, that that would be the Jenny Craig. But there's no the PC Amish culture. Community. It don't matter. You can use those right. words. Hey, fatty, yeah. come here. I'm going to yeah. help you lose weight. That's true. Yeah. 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 But it'd be hard to mass produce those advertisements, and you don't have TV. We're well, going to have to hand write them. Yeah. With horse dung or something. Yeah. Uh, or maybe old horseshoes, and you just. Th- yeah. Maybe you could throw old horseshoes at their mouths and bust the teeth out. That'd be a good pastime, maybe. Yeah, man, we're going <laughs> south real quick on this one. So anyway, um, the Amish believe that vanity goes against God. That that's their explanation. Vanity for it. goes against God. Right. So they've run that's with that. I, so they've run with that idea, right? Okay. And it says um, the appearance of teeth in women is looked down upon in Amish communities. So a number of Amish reality TV shows, of which I have watched a few episodes here and there introduce the concept of having a healthy set of teeth pulled out even at a young age okay so all right you confuse me a little bit so you're talking about not like taking out the back teeth or whatever all of them and, and, and leaving you know the front teeth when you open your mouth and you see the front teeth you're talking about no kidding just yanking them all well you know out. well you know what I don't know, because if we're talking about vanity, nobody really kind of, oh, yeah, they've got a nice pair of back teeth. It might just be the front ones. Anything which makes them look attractive, they might just knock out. So they might keep all the ones at the back, which you can't see. Again, probably should have done more research into yeah, this. Yeah, probably should have, but it the There was same a question. Time, yeah, at the same I know, time, I, I'm sitting wrote here down the th- quick answer. thinking, it, you know, there must be a kind of insider industry outside of Amish communities when these girls get these teeth yanked out that they're going to turn around and go get new teeth. Yeah. So, I mean, you could set up a dentist shop somewhere, like a cosmetic dentist somewhere, and put new teeth in there. Man, that's that, that's got to suck. Yeah. I don't remember what part of the Bible it talks about taking the teeth out. Well, but, that, that's, uh, why I think they, that's why I think they run with the kind of belief of vanity goes against God. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, uh, you know that that yeah. one's that one to me is up. Pretty it it kind of it kind of um led me to think. Well, do the Amish women kind of shave their armpits and shave their legs, or is it just like the uh, whole her sweet approach of, you know, if I, I turn know, but, into Chewbacca after the age of uh, puberty, then that's the way right. It goes. But it, but if you've ever met an Amish person, you've seen their haircuts, and it's like, okay, well, you don't need any additional help. I mean, they're not wearing makeup. Yeah. So, it, it, there's not that much vanity Probably there. explains why most of them live in Pennsylvania. Yeah, that's true. Because a lot of Pennsylvanian women, even the non-Amish ones, are pretty basic. Yeah, they don't really wear that's makeup. That's true. Uh, yeah, congratulations. The only ones I've to, met from Pennsylvania. Congratulations to us. We just lost every listener in Pennsylvania, but uh, Both sucks them. to be y'all because y'all yeah. aren't here in Texas yeah. where the women are yeah. beautiful. Beautiful, yeah. So um, is one, which I thought, figured you might have some input on. What are the Amish not allowed to do? Amish women are not allowed to brush their teeth, so it would be easier for the Amish dentist to remove them. So I'm going to go with that with number one. Mm. Uh, How long do you think dentistry school takes in the Amish community? I mean, if you're an orthodontist there and you're just responsible for knocking out the front teeth, it's got to be like a week course most. Oh, oh no, not even a week. I, I'm yeah. thinking, you know, big breakfast. Yeah. Big big breakfast meeting, right? Every, everybody's eggs and sausage, biscuits and gravy, all that. And then dude gets up there and says, okay, uh, bust their teeth out. Who's ready for lunch? I think that's how it goes. Yeah. I could teach that. Course. Now, you, you got to think they probably don't have anesthetic or any of that. Ooh. So do you think they pull them out with like pliers Ooh, or I wonder if... bash them in with the horseshoes? Yeah. Or... yeah, but I wonder, you know, like you say with the anesthetic, uh, do they drink? Have we looked that up? I don't think they do. Oh, uh, interesting. You'd figure though, with you know, if they're more agricultural or rural, they could find a way to make some alcoholic beverage from fermentation of said agricultural right. produce. Right. That's true. Yeah. But I don't think at any point during that paragraph I read about why did the Amish remove girls' teeth. It was inferring that they get young teenage girls drunk then hit their teeth out with a brick. But we can't prove that. But we can't prove that, so it is a possibility. So go on, more things. What are the Amish not allowed to do? Uh, Drive cars. Again, we know that's not true. Some communities, they are allowed to drive cars. Oh, really? Because you always picture that, you know, horse and buggy thing, right? You know, well, that, yeah, that that's that stereotypical Amish that that they got the horse and buggy yeah. and they're driving around there and they're yeah. not allowed to drive cars. Uh, I'm gonna guess they're not allowed to, you know. It, and we kind of joked about this before, but you know, watch movies, watch TV, what watch any kind of mm. entertainment put out by the Hollywood machine. So do you think when it comes back to the telephone thing, then then smartphones are definitely not allowed because I would think so. I think if they if they've let's got be honest, phones, I mean they then, can do anything with an iPhone. Yeah, but if, but if they or got a Samsung Galaxy, yeah, if, if they've got phones and they're allowed to have phones, you would honestly think they're either landline phones or they're flip phones, like that somebody's mm. bought a box like a a case or whatever of Motorola razors from the late 1990s and are finally letting them have phones yeah. and that's it bet they don't pay the bill online though oh that's true yeah. maybe maybe they got to do the prepaid thing yeah maybe they pay in straw yeah Okay. Yeah, or or bartering furniture, system. Barnitur- bartering yeah. system. Yeah, well, I, I know a lot of them sell their furniture, yeah. so maybe they trade furniture for you know Seven yeah. Eleven flip phones. This is where an Etsy or an eBay store would really work in their favor. Yeah, it would if they had a computer to yeah. run it. Yeah, that's true. So anyway, the answers from the interwebs about what they're not allowed to do. It says a uh, old order. Now we did establish before the show began that there are four different. Um, oh, you, types you, of Amish. There no, is old order, new order, and I forgot the other two, and we didn't yeah. bother looking up to see what those other two are. But right. anyway, old order Amish communities, um, they actually um, won't allow you to have buttons or zippers. Can't nope. button anything up, can't zip you. So no pants buttons, up. no zippers. Draw so... strings only, son. Oh, wow. Okay. So can you use a belt? I, I don't know. Okay. 
It'd probably be just, a drawstring just, again, wouldn't it? If well, you're not going to use the zipper, you might as well just use use a piece of string for every function. All right, so 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 walk me through this. So so you're an Amish dude, right? And they're making their own clothes, and you want a wife that's going to be able to sew those clothes. She can't use buttons. She can't use zippers. I think you just but, do holes and put the string through, don't you? Yeah, but okay. Now follow me here, but. All her teeth are busted out, so she can't take that thread and just yeah, like... Yeah, she can't get, hold it in her teeth. And, yeah, yeah, she can't, can't uh, do that. Yeah. So it, isn't that kind of a fallacy in what they're trying to accomplish here? Oh, I don't know. Uh, um, this is getting very complicated. So anyway, I, I thought this was going to be simple. Now now I have all does, these questions. It is complicated, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for men, they regulate the hair and the beard length. Okay. Can't have your beard too long, can't have your hair too long. Whereas women are not allowed to cut the hair at all. And what about beard length for the women? Well, again, I'd be more worried about the armpit and the leg hair, really. Because you can close your eyes to the beard. You can't really ignore Mm -hmm. the hair everywhere else thing if you're uh, trying to make a large family. Man, this is... uh... Man, this is going south. I, I'm yeah. really feeling sorry for. A well, lot no, of actually, out it's, there. it's a it's an uplift. The last question actually was quite uplifting in okay, terms good. of. Okay, um, Let, good. I don't please. know. How, I don't know how we can make this one go south. Let's put it that way. Okay, well, All good because right. we yeah. we need something on a yeah. high note here yeah. in this section. So please yeah. end this on a high note. So, uh, why do Amish get married on Thursdays? The wedding venues are going to be cheaper on a Thursday because everybody wants to get married on a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. But I don't think they're too worried about... Well, they uh, get married in the Amish community, so exactly not, nothing it, about that. Well, that's what I mean. It, yeah. They're not too worried about paying for that. So, Thursday. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm guessing they're going to church on Sunday, right? So, is this a Thursday night... You know, going into Friday and Saturday, kind of like a two-day honeymoon. Doubtful. You know, consummating the marriage thing. I very much doubt there's any honeymoon involved, unless they're going across the road to the other community with well, a car and the phone. Well, when I say honeymoon, I'm not talking about a trip. I'm I'm talking about you know the consummation of the marriage type deal to give, you know, this. Poor kid that's looking at his new wife that has no teeth and can't sew two days to try to consummate well, the can. marriage well, because we maybe he needs yeah. 48 hours to make it happen. I mean, I'm not trying to be crass, but, you know, use your imagination. Maybe it takes that long to go ahead and, and you know, make the magic happen, well, so to speak. we can't say that don't sew because I think they make all their own clothes. Why, well, no. Right, no, I they know must that. be out of sew. It's well, not like they're putting... Because at some point you've got about a sew. Well, okay. So follow me here. Just I don't think you need teeth to sew. I think at some point on the interwebs, <sighs> you've found this correlation between sewing and having teeth and decided one cannot happen without the other. That's true. Yeah, in, I don't in, think that's true. No, I think you're that... talking about threading the eye of a needle. But you remember, when you're sewing big clothes, it's not a thin needle. It's not fine stuff. I mean, it's probably one of those mm, big needle eyes but... where, you know, even somebody with uh, Parkinson's disease can thread the needle. Yeah, but 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 follow me here. Let let's take the sewing out of it. Mm. So it, with everything you've described, you have to consummate the marriage. Yeah, and you know what you're facing. Yeah, maybe it takes you a little bit of time yeah. to be able to be quote unquote up to the challenge. Yeah, and so that's maybe the Thursday. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm shooting All in the right. dark here. I mean, you you hit me with this. It's on Thursdays. Yeah. So. Hopefully, you're going to tell me this why it's where, on Thursday. This is where Jacob needs some alcohol, I think. Yeah. Um, so anyway, Amish weddings are normally on Thursdays, sometimes on Tuesdays, actually, depending upon the community, um, because it's actually the least busy day of the week in terms of farming. Oh. I don't know why. So all of a sudden... Thursday's thir- not a busy day for farming. I don't know if the cows kind of... It's their day off or... Right. Uh, are they in some kind of a cow union where they're like, right. hey, we're, we're yeah. not going to do anything all the animals, Thursday? All the animals have trade unions. Yeah. The yeah. Chickens, chickens and the cows kind of lay down tools. Well, or, and, and don't forget about the ducks. The ducks yeah. are probably the ones that started this. Yeah. Yeah. A little mini Hitlers. Um, so apparently for a wedding... Right, it takes a full day to prepare and a full day to clean up for the event. So 
you can't let your parents know on a Wednesday that you're going to be married on a Thursday. You have to kind of give them two days so they can spend like... Right. So if you let them know on Tuesday, they can prepare on Wednesday. Right. The, you let's get married on Thursday let's and they walk clear through up on this. a Friday. So, yeah. So so yeah. When, Wednesday, all the prep work's done. Thursday's the wedding. Friday, they got to clean up. Yeah. And, that's it. and then you got Saturday. Well, no, and, and they're it. not waking back up and watching life. cartoons no, on back Saturday. To, back to normal life. Oh, okay. Yeah, I so. got you. There should be a reality show on the Amish wedding planner. Could, could, do you think they wear wedding dresses and have all that type of stuff? Oh, uh, Guarantee there's no bachelorette party and all no, that. No. No head night. No well, let's, stag night. Let's stuff. be honest. That, that would be pretty boring based off all the stuff that you're talking to me right. about right now. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, what are they doing on Saturday? Right. I mean, are they just going back to normal? I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about the, hmm, I thought, well, yeah, it'd be a pretty cushy and easy job to be an orthodontist in the Amish community, and wedding planner might be an untapped resource for us to go into and do. So I was thinking about some entrepreneurship that you and I, the wolf and the shepherd, could do to provide services for the Amish community. Right. It, and let's be honest, you could probably do both of those jobs and still do another well, job. Oh, yeah, you do one on... Well, yeah. yeah. Well, because if, if you're a wedding planner, right, I mean, you, you got to make sure that you're there for Wednesday to get everything set up. Thursday, make sure everything's good. Friday, make sure everything gets cleaned up. Saturday... You take a day off. Sunday, you go to church. Monday and Tuesday, you run your dentist shop. So, yeah. I mean, now two jobs. Why not? Well, I do want to say that if this is about the Amish community in Texas, where there's only 65 of them, we're going to have to be salaried because there's not going to be yeah. that much work there mostly. You can have a lot uh, of days off. No, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah I mean, you, you, you've got to be able to make a living. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, with 65 people, maybe once, twice a year, you're going to have a wedding. Right. Because uh, I forgot you know. to mention the Amish aren't allowed to get divorced, so they're not going to have oh. any remarriages. So with those 65, other than the one person who's going to be sadly left out, Best you're gonna have thirty two marriages. Yeah. So so you couldn't add Amish divorce attorney to that list because no. you're not gonna make any yeah. money. Okay. Now marriage counseling, yes. You could see how this one guy is this. Yeah, he's guy, got to wear a lot of hats. Yeah, yeah. And I'm I'm guessing you know they all wear hats yeah. too. So I wonder if they switch out hats depending on you know literally what hat they're wearing. Now, at do the they? Same I mean, time. I can't remember from. Uh, watching um, the reality TV shows. Do the women wear those bonnets? Because I know the men wear yes. those hats. The women have yeah, to wear the, bonnets. Yeah, yeah, the little white bonnet or braided, thing. braided hair and bonnets. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know about the braided hair, well, but I, I know about hair. the bonnet. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, so I, I was sitting there thinking, how can you and I make money from the yes. Amish? Right? Yeah, that's the goal here. Yeah. It, how can we monetize... The Amish community. Well, first of all, I kind of went the rogue route of thinking, well, we could just go rob them because we're not going to be caught on security camera. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. But, but if they have no money... Chase us off with pitchforks. Yeah, but if they have no money, what well, are we just going to steal? Of, um, teeth to sell on uh, eBay to witches for um, oh, rituals. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. Some horses, because horses always go for good money. True. Um Past that, well, I didn't get past that because I actually came up with some really good ideas where we can make money in the Irish community, right? Okay. So number one, create a social media platform ex exclusively for the Amish because the Amish are now found in 30 states plus your favorite country, Canada. Ah. So it might be useful to connect them. I think we could go to Mark Zuckerberg and he would hand this off to us. I, I really do. Amish book. Yeah. I mean, we could have Amish book. We don't need his permission to make Amish book. Amishagram. Yeah, but we're so lazy, we need to steal the code. I mean, we're not going to write a website for this. We we need something to spin off for us that we can just, you know, drag and drop, go on godaddy.com. Maybe we should just make it a Facebook page or a Facebook group. Yes. Yeah. No, that's a good idea. Let's do that. It, so it's just for Amish people, a Facebook group for Amish people. I'm sure we're going to have 
zero people on that group. Well, the problem is the feed, the news feed is going to be pretty boring, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, When you've got true. your friends connected. What did you do today? Um, built a barn. Uh, picked some crops. Yeah. Uh, yelled at the ducks. Sprained, sprained my leg riding my no pedal bike. Um, busted the yeah. teeth out of my daughter yeah. so she fell can... asleep playing charades because nobody could guess the movie I was thinking yeah. of. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. Uh, that, there's not going to be a lot of content there. Well, anyway, it's it's just an idea. It might be money. Anyway, the other one came up with again. This does involve having a computer, so I don't know how many of this was will relate to. But then I thought, well, you know what? This doesn't have to be done on computer. This can be done with good old manual pen and paper, right? Oh, okay. Online dating or offline dating. Offline okay. Dating. Now, in case of those communities, the old order communities where maybe they're not allowed like um, cameras and stuff. Right. I figured you and I, if we can't take profile photos, we can do profile drawings. Ooh. Knowing our talent in artistry, especially portraits, of faces yeah because i'll be honest with you i don't think it's really gonna matter i figured yeah either online or offline dating and i figured why it'd be such a hit okay okay you think of regular dating apps at the moment they fail because people are looking you know um for people who they find attractive and they have something in common with gotcha and it is that second bit i figured well let's take the guesswork out of everything right similar taste in music Check. Right. Similar fashion choices. Check. Check. Like beards. Check. Check. Like large families. Check. Check. Like building barns. Check. Check. So there we go. So I mean, already the interests are like, oh my goodness, we have so much in common. That is now, true. Now, the men all have beards and hair of a regulated length. The women are wearing the bonnets and they've got the long hair anyway. Remember, none of them are going to be fat because we've knocked all their front teeth out. Right. Right? So, I mean, it's an easy match. Pretty much everybody, as long as they're kind of single, is an easy match. So, I so, think we could do this. So, how do we get past the uh, swipe left or swipe right if they don't have this? Is it uh, you burn a fire in the backyard when you have decided yes this is a match and you burn a fire in the front yard when it's not a match it, it, you know, how, how do how do we determine how the matches are and well, how do we I'll, track that well i'll be honest with you i don't really think past the eventuality that anybody would actually say no yeah that's true this I is mean, this it, is your match more like it's more actually like an arranged marriage type thing it's like yeah. this is the person you're going to marry yeah, or or like yeah. uh, certain unknown yeah. friends of ours, where it's like, uh, okay, well, I know my choices are kind of limited, so I'm just going to take what I can yeah. get. So anyway, so I think we could do a like I said, if they're not up for the online day, and we could do the offline day. Yeah, for the Amish. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we could put like yeah. a, a spiral notebook together and just kind of pass it around. Yeah, it, it, that could work. I think I'd actually like to date an Amish girl because outside of my aversion to hard work. I think there's actually less chance of me disappointing her. That's probably true. Yeah. The the problem with your theory, though, is I think it'd be a lot of hard work to date an Amish girl. Because you're going to have to infiltrate that Well, you don't have to worry about a sexting somebody. Well, no, that's true. But you're already going to talk much differently than the community. They're already going to look at you as so much of an outsider. So... Uh, because they're all, basically, except for the Canadians, they're Americanized. So they're going to know you're from the outside. It, and you don't have any hair on your head, so you don't have that goofy haircut going on. I'll just wear a hat How, with a wig I, built into it, I think. Oh, I think that's... I mean, another... I can grow I can grow a good beard. I've got right. hair on my face. Yeah, but, so so maybe that is how we can make money on this. That yeah. you can sell hats with the fake Amish haircut underneath. That's the point. You've got to figure some of them go bald, right? Some of them have got to have a mutated gene where they go bald. And they like, have to. They can't grow long hair if they're bald, right. can they? Yeah. So they've got to have the wigs. That, that's true. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Yeah. But but then you have to learn that, you know, German version of Pennsylvania Dutch or whatever that they speak. But it, you're so hard to understand anyway. Maybe you can get away with that. I, I, don't, I don't know. Good luck to you. I, I think if anybody can pull it off, it's going to be you. I think I could become a king in the Amish you community. Could. 
because I, because I if I had because if I had my phone secretly and especially like once um our friend Elon Musk gets all his uh you know Wi-Fi everywhere in the world right. thing yeah the you know I can connect internet. I can have Wi-Fi always on I can connect and anything they have a problem with I can secretly go you know, into the woods and, t and pretend I'm going to be taking a well, poo in a hole yeah. and I can look up the issue on YouTube, come back and come up with a, with a solution or, to any problem they have. Or the, it, this might work better. Rather than being the king, you could be a sorcerer and you could have... Type of wizard. But I, no, I think, they're very, I think they're very much against any of the kind uh, of supernatural okay. thing. It, you know, any of that see, necromancy, consulting with like fortune tellers. I think they're hardcore on that. Uh, okay. No Good magic point. allowed. Yeah, yeah. They this is, this is why when they play charades, they're not allowed to do any of the Harry Potter movies. Ah. Uh. God, yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, yeah, because there were a lot of good Harry Potter movies. Yeah, think about that though; it's one way to kind of sell yourself out a little bit when you do charades and nobody guesses it, and it's, oh my goodness, people! It was Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Oops. Uh, idea number three. This one might be pushing it, um, because I don't know how familiar they are with the blockchain and stuff. Uh, -huh. uh crypto coin, right? Okay. It's um cryptocurrency just for the Amish, and I'm going to call it the uh, Amish Mennonite coin, or AMC for short. And uh, uh, we won't get any problems from American movie classics no, by no. doing that. Well, they won't know. Yeah. Yeah. And they can use it to buy, like, wood and stuff, you know. Wood. And wood and Well, the stuff wood. to make horseshoes out of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wood and metal. Yeah. And that's pretty yeah. much all they're buying. Maybe, you know, some corn. I guess, and that's pretty much it. Right, yeah. So crypto coin, I think that's yeah. the thing. We we could control that whole cryptocurrency market for the Amish. But you see, it doesn't even need to be electronic. I figured if we just get some card and just like maybe print out before we go there, we can print out the coins and just hand them out. But what if we use Chuck E. Cheese tokens? Yeah, we could do that. I yeah. mean, just tell them it's, we'll just write AMC on the back of each of them right. so they know it's not right. really a mouse yeah, who's going to give you access to games look, and uh, uh, cheap all, Chinese all we prizes. Need, yeah. All we need is a yeah. Chuck E. Cheese employee and a Sharpie. And we could get like a box of Chuck E. Cheese tokens and write AMC all over these tokens and say this yeah. is your new currency. Yeah. Done. Yeah. I mean, finally work. we're yeah. figuring out a way to make some right. money off yeah. this. Last idea I had, right? Okay. It's an online clothing store. Now again, oh, here this we... presumes they have access to the interwebs, but... or some of the communities in the new order actually have uh, smartphones where they can have access to the net. But anyway, obviously it's going to accept AMC as one of the forms of currency. It has to. Have to, because we've got to increase the value of the uh, coin. Right. Because we're going to short the heck out of that since yes. it launches and yeah. just sell it all. And just it like GameStop yeah. stock on yeah. Reddit. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. We're, yeah. we're going to yeah. corner the market on that because yeah. we're going to benefit from this. Yeah. So I figured yeah. like, to save the women some time in the Amish communities, um, we get those kind of funny outfits they way, kind of outsource them to China. So we get okay. them done real cheap, right? And we but sell them on this online clothing store. And I figured like, I don't know, lumber handling gloves, reusable cloth diapers, that type of stuff, and have it on an online clothing store for the Amish. But, okay, so I like where you're going with this, but what if we take it one step further? And we get somebody like a, a Kylie Jenner to wear Amish outfits, you know, because she's always in like some skimpy bikini or whatever. Yeah. And and people blindly follow her and want to buy whatever yeah. she has. So if we get all these cheap clothes, right, and then we just get Kylie Jenner to wear an Amish dress one day, we could be billionaires yeah, just selling this. They're not going to recognize it. It's just going to look like a slut in a dress. Okay, yeah. and, and that's how most clothes are sold right now. Well, so, yeah. uh, I once again, you didn't shoot any holes in my theory. Well, so, have you got any more ideas for entrepreneurship? Which can you re actually, before you answer that, okay, to give to kind of remind me to talk about this, I did write down entrepreneurial. It, did I spell that correctly, or is there like six more letters in there than there should be? Uh, no, I, I I think you left out like 12 letters and added eight letters yeah. into that. But uh, at least, you know, with the notes. And 
I was spelling it out and it had like eight syllables when I was spelling yeah. it out. You know, in, in one of these days, you know, we're we're working on actually getting cameras in our studio and everything so y'all can see w- what we actually do while we're recording. But uh, this is one of those moments where we're probably glad we don't have cameras going on right, right. now. When uh, if somebody was to look at your spelling of on. Entrepreneurial. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. we're we're terrible yeah. with spelling. Yeah, uh, it, it's probably a good thing that we actually didn't have the cameras going bit for shot, that one. Big shot. The Amish don't play Scrabble. Actually, Scrabble would be a Bigger. good one. Although yeah. they probably the thing is though they probably only know like they wouldn't even have to use most of the alphabet because as long as you've got enough to spell like horse right. and stuff like that, then or, you'd be like. Or are they going to play Scrabble with the Pennsylvania Dutch version of German yeah. that they talk? So it, do you have to turn around and, you know, put that in immediately? Yeah. Well, I think we solved all of the problems that uh, we need to with the Amish. But uh, as far as what I would do, as far as what kind of businesses I would run with the Amish... Gosh, I mean, that's such a a tough topic to try and figure out. But honestly, I think, number one, they have the horse and buggy, right? So they they have these buggies. I I would still try to figure out a way, kind of going back to the bicycles with no pedals. I would try to figure out a way to create the better buggy. Uh, Some kind of a... I don't know what you want to call it, some kind of feature with the new versions of the buggy that you have that would force people to go ahead and trade in their old buggy and get a new buggy. You see the same buggy, and it's been the same buggy forever. I I mean, anytime you see that buggy online in pictures or whatever, you're like, oh yeah, that's an Amish buggy. That that would be mine. I, I would be a used buggy salesman and try to figure out a way to do that. And, of course, I mean, you you got the horses that have to pull those buggies. And so maybe if you buy one of these used buggies, then maybe you get new horses to be able to pull the buggies whenever you trade your used buggy in for a new buggy. Just, you know, hiding the fact that you you tell somebody, hey, this buggy gets more gallops per oat bag than the last buggy did and just kind of fool them into believing that this is the reason why you need to come to uh, the shepherd's used buggy salesman. Well, I actually came up with two more ways we could make money out of the Amish, actually. Number one, horse racing. They can bet their AMC cryptocurrency. That's a good point. Uh, Obviously, you and I would be the bookies to it. Take a cut yes. off the top. Yeah, um, there, there's got to be some percentage involved the, and my, where we take a little bit off the top. Of and my and my other one was um, what episode was it? We were talking about the American Girl doll thing. Oh, it's a I, few episodes ago, but I can't remember the context. Yeah, it's it, so random. I can't remember what episode. It could have been on anything. It could have been Star Wars. Could have been right. It, I do remember us anything. talking about this. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so I figured, what about Amish American Girl dolls? Because you see, the great thing about American Girl dolls at the moment, in terms of making money is that you can customize them. But, again, we can have low-quality ones just purely made to exactly all the same specifications. So, again, we can just get them made in, mass-made in China, and we can sell the equivalent of American girl dolls, would be Pennsylvanian Dutch dolls, to the Amish children. But, and but couldn't we have the Amish people make these dolls and pay them in our AMC currency? No, they're going to be more expensive than the Chinese. Remember, they only earn, like, about two dollars a full day i'm pretty sure the amish are going to want more money than that yeah that's because if they're selling their furniture and they actually build um barns and houses for outsiders as well not just within their community so you've got to think they're getting paid they've got to have some concept of money yeah you know because you're going to run out of trees they've got to buy lumber from elsewhere right you know so they've got some concept of money so i don't think we can pay them more than we can pay the chinese for making our uh, pennsylvanian dutch dolls right no no true 
So anyway, no, that um, makes sense. if anybody does have any extra entrepreneurial um, ideas, send us an email at thewolfandtheshepherd at gmail.com. Um, we will pick out our favorite ones and then forget to mention them at a later date, but we might actually add them to the Facebook page on the... Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah, when we post this. As we do. Now, I'll be honest with you, right? 80% of what I learned about the Amish actually comes from a TV show I watched uh, called Amish Haunting. Amish uh, Haunting. Amish Haunting, yeah. It ran okay. on the Travel Channel back in, I think it was like about 2013, 2014. So um, I just wanted to quickly, there was only six episodes. It only ran for one season. Um, I just wanted to read you the titles of the episodes, right? There's only six episodes. Okay. Okay. Six episodes. Six episodes, right? And I want you to give me a quick one or two sentence thing of what you think each show was about. So remember, this was hauntings in the Amish community, right? Gotcha. Episode number one. Every episode has a title and then like hyphenate and then maybe a little bit more description of what's going on. All right. So which, are you only giving me the title or are you giving no, me No, I'm all giving you the it. full thing. Oh, because, okay. Because actually... The second part of it sometimes kind of uh, makes it even harder to work out what's going on. So episode number one was named Faceless Doll, The Witch's Grave. I seem to remember something about the Amish and them having dolls that have no face. That's probably the ones we sold to them, which were made in China. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, it's cheaper that way. Yeah. So uh, draw your own face. Yeah. So yeah. so the faceless doll and what was the second part? The witch's grave. Remember, this is connected. This is the same episode. I don't think it was like two different uh, things in one episode. Well, you lost me on that one. I I don't know how you take the faceless doll and the witch's grave and tie those together. Well, actually, now think about it. I'm wondering if each of these episodes was two separate stories. Oh well, <laughs> and and of course, once again, it, I can't this remember. Is, this was like seven years ago. Oh uh, yeah, this is our so uh, crack know. research team. Yeah. So anyway, so well, either of those ones then, faceless doll or the witch's grave. Which ones do you want to run with? Giving us an idea. It, I I would rather watch the witch's grave than yeah. the faceless doll. Well, it's probably thinking now it's grave where a witch was buried. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. Number two, Crybaby Bridge and the Witch's Tree. Now, I don't think this was the same witch, which was in episode yeah, one. Yeah, I'm wondering, is there yeah. a theme running where it's know. like, oh, it's a witch. Yeah. It's I, a witch. Yeah. yeah so she cry ba- the same uh, as a duck. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like a Monty Python sketch yeah. is So cry, ba- cry Baby Bridge and what may have been another episode within the same episode, the Witch's Tree. Which one of those do you want to kind of guess what they're about? Uh, Can't be a tree belonging to a witch. That's too basic. Yeah, I mean, Crybaby Bridge is probably somebody that wanted to walk across a bridge and uh, started crying about it because their doll didn't have a face and they were thinking about uh, they just left the grave of this witch and now all of a sudden there's the tree. Right, all right. So episode number three, Possessed Boy and Buried in Black. Yeah, but aren't you... Typically Pretty buried in black. But you have to remember, this is the Amish community. Buried in black, I don't know. Are all people mar- buried in black? I, I thought you were supposed to be buried in... Well, I, and I'm thinking of men right now, you know, buried in a dark suit. Uh, if, if that's, you know, which way you want to go. Uh, but uh, Possessed Boy, yeah, he's probably... Possessed. All, <laughs> yeah, well, he's probably all wound up because of the yeah. faceless doll and crying about going over the bridge. Yeah. Well, episode number four, this one kind of takes it a little bit further. Possessed Barn and the Dark Art. Okay, so now you have the boy who's possessed. <laughs> now he goes to the barn, and now the barn becomes possessed. And so good for the boy, he gets rid of his possession so good for him, right. and the dark art part it has to be with the buried in black, and now all of a sudden we're going to put pictures up in the barn about uh, people being buried in black. Now, um, by the time it got to episode five, the titles got a little bit more ridiculous. Oh, okay. Episode number five: Sinner's Death, Electric Lies. Electric Lies. Yeah. Okay. That that's uh... Reliant does not save you as much as TXU in energy costs yeah. and free nights and weekends, given the rate of per whatever. Yeah. So I don't yeah. think it's about that. I think yeah, it's about I, something else. Electric Lies well, might be related I, to lightning. Well, <laughs> it, it could be related to the fact that if you have electricity, you live a life of lies because that's uh, 
the possessed void and the possessed barn that made you have electricity and so you have this magic that uh, you have light in your house that is not naturally produced. All right. Well, I'm interested how you're going to tie in the last episode, even though none of these episodes were continue had any continuity to them. Episode number six, entitled Goat Baby, Evil Taxi. Wow. Okay, so <laughs> uh, Goat Baby is probably the possessed boy walking across the, uh, the bridge, and Evil Taxi kind of sounds like uh, that reality show about when you get in the taxi and you have to answer all the questions and win money. And if you get into a taxi, then that's evil. But I wonder if there's some Amish people that maybe not everybody has a buggy. And so there's like Amish Uber. And so they're taking people around in Amish Uber and dropping them off places. It kind of makes you wonder why this show didn't run to season two, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it sounds a lot like keeping up with the Kardashians. Yeah. Uh, I think they had the same production staff, but they got a little bored with the Amish. Thing. So, um, you know, before we end today, if there's any Amish you want to complain about today's episode, because I realize we did say a few things which might have come across as a little bit ignorant. Maybe a little bit. Um, but if they want to complain, um, if, they want, if they want to record a video, maybe complaining on their smartphone and upload it to our Facebook page, well, it, well, no, we will no. watch it. Right, but but let's back up. They need to go ahead and record a video on their iPhone, yeah. upload it to their YouTube channel. Yeah, and then send we'll, us the link. Maybe yes. post the link on our Facebook page. Yeah, po post the link on our Facebook page yeah. and send us an email with the link at the same yeah. time so we can verify that. Yeah. Then we'll go ahead yeah. and watch it, yeah. and we'll go ahead and set up a Zoom call with them Yeah. so we can talk about it before we come back on the podcast but, and but talk about it. I'm, I'm going to be very specific about I do want them to have some biometric stuff because they all look the same with the same length haircut and beards and wearing the hats That's i true. don't want to be fooled by one person sending in multiple yes. complaints so we're going yeah. to need some biometric data yeah we're, we're definitely going to need some way to verify their identity yeah uh maybe a face yeah. id on their iphone yeah and send us that data, send us that so, raw data. so we know that yeah. it, it's actually the person that we're talking yeah. to so, uh, well, with all that said, uh, thank you to all of our friends in the Amish community who have listened to this podcast, and we hope we accurately depicted your community. And once again, I mean, please reach out to us. And uh, we know we're trying to provide podcasts this year to different sects of the community, just like we did with vampires. Uh, we, we would love for any Amish to reach out to us who are listening to this podcast right now and uh, talk to you and we'll catch you on the next one.